Okay, so this is in preparation for my first talking trip, 2018, and easily my least favorite aspect of talk fishing is the fact that I have to use bait, and these Asian shore crabs are not stocked in my local bait shop just yet. And as you can see, I'm a terrible crab catcher. Basically, you go to any rocky shoreline that's exposed during low tide, flip rocks, and they're everywhere. Okay, so here's how I prefer to hook my Asian crabs. Instead of going through the middle, I go in between the leg joints and out the other side, but not completely out. I leave the barb inside the crab and just the hook point peeking out. I've also crushed these barbs almost all the way down. There's still a little bit of a nub left and this is how I prefer to hook them. I find that they last a little bit longer on the hook. Alright, so I'm going to catch a lot of shorts this day. I think well over 30, 35 shorts. Um, and a couple of nicer fish. One thing is, you should be pretty familiar with how your jig feels once the crab is gone. So if you do a slow lift, you should be able to tell that there's no more crab on your jig. And that's going to save you a lot of time. The jigs I'm using are Talk Handy jigs, and I'll leave a link to his website down below. And I'm not sponsored or affiliated in any way. I just find the quality to be there. Um, he uses very stout Mustad nickel hooks, and I personally prefer the lima bean shaped jigs. I find that they get hung up the least, and there's also a trick to how you position your jigs. So the bottom here is pretty rocky, right? That's where blackfish lives. And if I feel my jig fall into a deeper pocket, then I like to pull it slowly out and rest it on top of rocks. And you should be able to feel that. You know, so one is you get hung up less, but more importantly, you want a big blackfish to pick up your jig on the top of that piece of structure. So you stand very little chance if a 10 plus pounder takes your jig deep inside the rocks. You're going to get broken off immediately. It doesn't matter how heavy your leader material is. So here I'm using 20 pound J braid to 20 pound floral leader. And the whole trick is to turn them before they know what just happened. And that will be demonstrated later in more detail on larger fish. So when do you set the hook? Um, especially using Asian crabs, I tend to set the hook if there's movement on the jig. So if it's being pulled away, obviously I set the hook. The one type of bite you should pay attention to is the slack bite. So usually I'll keep a very slight tension in the line connected to my jig and a lot of the bigger tog, they're gonna slack you up. If you picture them feeding their head down, they pick up your crab and then they just tilt back horizontal. And a large tog, he or she is not afraid of smaller fish stealing their food. And in my experience, they don't travel very far after picking up your jig. So if you feel any kind of slack or loss in tension from your jig, then you should set the hook. The rod I'm using is the Mega Bass Hayuga 7.2 Heavy and the reel is an old Abu Revo Inshore. And if you notice, 
in my earlier videos, I've used very light tackle for togging, and that's a lot of fun, but I've had a few fish that I couldn't turn in the first few seconds, and now I am ready for the bigger tog to hit my jig. There seems to be no pattern to it. I've never came across a big tog spot, and this is the first keeper and the only one I kept that day. Even a fish this size, this is about 16 and 3 quarter inches, 17 inches. If your structure is vertical enough, they can break you off fairly easily. So, for this fishery, I err on the side of going heavy. So here you'll see me slowly pull my jig out of a deep pocket and rest it. See right there I'm kind of stuck and then now I, ge I gently lay it on top of a piece of rock. Oh shit. Yeah, this is a surprise. This is the first non-micro sea bass I caught in this area. So hopefully it's a sign of things to come. Sea bass have to be 15 inches in New York to keep. This one was like 12 and a half. So back it goes. Now what I try to do as soon as the jig touches down is be in the proper hook setting position which could be a little bit tricky when you're sitting down on a kayak. So it's something that I have to sort of remind myself to do. And that generally is having the rod tip a few inches off, off the water. And a lot of times I'll move my right hand over the butt of the rod. So I'm holding the rod in my left hand and I use the right hand as a lever and you see people do this, talking a lot. So this, this fish, very unfortunate. I'm pretty sure that happened during the fight. So that gives you some idea of how sharp some of the rocks are down there. Okay, so this is the big fish of the day. And this one did not slack me up. She moved the jig, like all the countless shorts I caught that day. And as you'll see, the first few seconds, right after the hook set, is everything. So here I'm holding the fish up, and I had maybe two cranks on it. Now I'm picturing her maybe four or five feet off the bottom, and she's trying to dig back down. And that's where having the proper gear is so important. See, at this point, it doesn't really matter. She can take drag. She's in open water but that hook set itself, lifting the fish just a foot or two off the bottom, out of those rocks, and then holding, pinning the fish up is, in my opinion, the difference between landing a decent tog and losing it almost every single time. So this female measured a little over 22 inches. It's not huge, but by far the biggest hog I had that day. And I'm not keeping her. My personal slot limit, you know, like I try to keep fish under 20 inches. I had my friend John help me snap a quick picture and back she goes. So this next clip is an old one from last year. I just want to show you what a slack bite and a really good hook set looks like. So I turn away. I feel something wrong. Slack me up. And right there, I set the hook. I was luckily in a very good position to give it a really big hook set. And immediately I had three or four cranks down on the reel. And by then, in my opinion, it's pretty much over for fish of this size class. I've never hooked one that's like 15, 16 pounds. Those 
those might break you off no matter what. But all the digging, all the drag peeling and open water is fine. I trust my knots, I trust my gear. But lifting that fish from the hook set on is, in my opinion, just the most important thing. And like I said before, it's, it's pretty tricky because both of these trips, I was inundated with shorts, 10 inch fish, 12 inch fish all day. And you never know when your next pickup is going to be a big tog. So it's a very unique and interesting fishery. There's nothing else quite like it in the Northeast. And hopefully I get a couple more days like that in this year. All right. Thanks for watching, guys, and stay tuned for the catch and cook.